One of the benefits of this place is there is plenty of water, enough to keep the orchard and the yard green, to keep the pool filled with fresh water, and for domestic use inside the house. Plenty of pressure, all gravity fed. It's a simple, low cost, reliable, low maintenance system, but there is something we need to do to it twice a year. This is one of the times we need to do it, so we'll go take care of that and I'll show you how it works. To get the water line to go from here up to the source, there were a couple challenges to overcome. One of them being there's a county road here it needs to cross. Well, instead of digging up the road to run it under the road, decades ago my grandfather just ran the pipe through an existing culvert under the road that just happens to be in a convenient enough place. The second pipe is just an old pipe that was abandoned. The other challenge being rugged terrain it has to go through. It was such a simple and effective system, decades later it's still the way it is. From here it goes up a distance across the prairie. Out across the prairie is an easy and convenient place to lay pipe. It's mostly trouble free, but every once in a while we do have a problem with it, and that problem is those things. They are big, they are heavy, they can sometimes be clumsy, and I get the impression they don't put a whole lot of thought and foresight into a lot of the things they do. One of the things they don't seem to be real good at is being mindful of things like other people's pipes and not breaking them. It doesn't happen very often, but once in a while we'll turn on a faucet and nothing happens. That's when we know one of those things probably got a little clumsy and pulled a pipe apart just by being one of those things and it's what they do. But surprisingly not that often. I think it's only happened maybe twice this summer. So maybe they are more mindful than I give them credit for. It would be nice to have the pipe trenched underground, but out through the prairie, it's really not where the problems typically happen. The pipe gets embedded down in the grass and it doesn't seem to be that vulnerable out in the even ground. The problems typically happen in places like these where it has to go through or cross gullies and obstacles. In the places where they are more problematic like this, it's not practical to bury them because if we trench down this gully, or across this gully, there's a lot of water that comes down here in the winter. It's going to cause erosion and it's just going to dig them up again. Since it doesn't happen that often, nobody's been that motivated to change the system we have. On this even ground, there's a cow trail right along the pipe, but still they don't break it. There are exceptions. Here's a spot where they spend a lot of time and there is a small leak that's developed, but it's been that way for a long time. Someday it's going to need to be fixed. A good thing about this black poly pipe, it's easy to work with, it's easy to repair by putting a splice in it. The pipe keeps going up the hill, high enough to where we get enough pressure from gravity. Out across the prairie is the easy place to lay pipe, over here is where it gets more difficult. That's not the easiest place to lay pipe, but that's where the water is. Since water has such a bad attitude about going uphill, it just doesn't like going uphill. The pipe doesn't go straight down the hill. The pipe goes down the hill at an angle to get further upstream. It goes through such a rugged spot, it's hard to walk through. So I'm gonna meet you down at the bottom, up around the other side. Here we are at the bottom of the hill. The pipe goes from way up there, where the prairie is, diagonally along the side of the cliff up there. Maybe it's not exactly a cliff, but close to it. I see a potential problem over here. This broken off stump has been trying to slide down the hill, but it got hung up on the pipe and it's pushing down on the pipe. Okay, it's not as big and heavy as I thought, but good to have that weight off the pipe from keeping it from pushing the pipe down. From the prairie to here is downhill. The pipe has to go downhill, which means the water has to go uphill. So to get the water to go uphill, we have to run the pipe further up the creek to 
get enough pressure to push it up the hill. Now we've arrived at the source. According to my altimeter, this is 180 feet in elevation higher than the elevation where the house is, which is high enough to push the water up over the hill so it can go down the prairie to the house. I got tired of talking over that noisy creek, so decided to do a voiceover on this part. We have this screen over the inlet of the pipe. It keeps debris and fish from going into the pipe. As nice as it might be to be able to turn on the faucet and have fish come out the faucet and land right in the pan, have our own fish dispenser, we don't want the debris coming down with it. The problems the debris would cause in the line outweighs the benefits of having a fish dispenser. Having the inlet in this creek works well in the summer, but in the winter when we get most of our rain, this creek becomes a raging torrent. A lot of water and sediment comes down this creek. If we left it in in the winter, the creek would just wash the pipe away. I'll show you the solution we have to that a short distance downstream. This is where the big creek and the little creek come together. We call this one the big creek because it's the big creek. We call this one the little creek because it's the little creek. Seemed like those were appropriate names for them. In the winter, we move the pipe over to the little creek where there's less water, less sediment. It's less likely to be washed down the stream. But in the summer, the little creek gets low and there's not enough water, so we move the pipe over to the big creek where there's plenty of water. We'll pull the pipe apart at the little creek hole, put the screen on it, tighten up the clamps, put some rocks on the pipe to hold it underwater. Now back down at the house, I'll turn the spigot on, see if there's enough water in the lines coming down the hill to get the flow going enough to push the water up and over the hill. All the water and the air bubbles that are now in the line after I opened it up. That's not a good flow. We're gonna have to go back up there and deal with that. We're back at the top of the hill where the pipe comes up through the prairie, then goes down over the hill to where the water is. From this point, the pipe goes downhill it hits the creek bottom then it goes up more according to my altimeter this spot is about 40 feet lower in elevation than where the source is so we have 40 feet of head to push the water up the hill and over this hump but sometimes when you open up the lines it lets a bunch of air in you get air bubbles in the system and it doesn't allow that to happen over here right at the top there's a t in the pipe with a plug in it Take that out, see what happens. Nothing happens. There's water sitting there, but there's no pressure here to push it out. So we'll go back down in the canyon, see what else we can do. We're back at the source in the little creek. I was hoping when I turned on the water down below, there'd be enough water in the line going downhill to create a siphon to get the water to go up over this hump. It could be the leaks in the pipe are preventing it from siphoning. We'll go downstream a bit. So this spot downstream, there's a sag in the pipe and a joint right here. See if we have good flow here. There's no flow here other than draining out what settled at the bottom of the pipe. Let's go back to the source. We'll go back up to where we took the pipe out of the big creek. Put that pipe back in to get some water flowing through it. I can feel a little bit of suction at the end, so I think it's going. Now back in the small creek, we got this one flowing again. This is a really good hole for a lot of reasons. The problem is it's got a little bit of a hump where it has to get a siphon going for it to work. We'll take the screen off. Put these back together. Go back down to where we pulled the pipe apart. Now we have a good flow down here. Let it glug all the air out of the system. 
Then we'll go back up, back at the little creek source. I'm going to disconnect these pipes, but keep them underwater, or keep it underwater. Got a good suction there. I'm going to keep it underwater so it doesn't suck up air while I put the screen on. Put a big heavy rock on top. Hold it down. Now we'll go back downstream. Now we got a good flow coming out of the little creek source where we want it. No glugging, no air in the system. We'll put these back together without getting too wet. Go downstream from here. A distance downstream, there's a joint in the pipe. I'll pull it apart, see if we have good flow here. Let that flow a little bit, make sure the air and everything's cleared out of it. We got a good enough flow here now, so hopefully when I put this back together, it'll be enough pressure to push the water up and over the hill. That is a good sign we have some good pressure here. We'll go up the hill, see what we have. Back at the top of the hill, it's a bit of a climb up out of the canyon, but it's still lower than the source. See what we have up at the bleed plug. We got pressure. See, now it's doing stuff. It's supposed to do stuff. We're bleeding the air out of the system. That's a good sign, the air is stopped. We got pressure up here. From this point, it's downhill all the way to the house. Since we have pressure here, we should be in business down there. Let's go see. Let's see what we have now. That looks better. I think we're back in business. Okay, most of the time this system is simple and low maintenance. It's just a couple times a year. I have to do a little bit of monkeying around to switch from the big creek to the little creek and then back the other way. One of the reasons we don't put any kind of a dam or structure, a more elaborate inlet in this system, is the creek is always moving around. It's always changing. It wouldn't be practical. We've tried different types of boxes with screens on them for the inlets, different things over the years, but just a simple screen on the end of the pipe works really well. The cows can be a little bit of a problem for it and just the rough terrain we have to go through that makes it not feasible to bury it. One thing I don't understand about this system, I showed in a previous video the water system for the upper cabin up the mountain. The bears chew up the water lines all the time. All the pipes that are strung out similar to this one, the bears chew holes in them. Why don't they do it to this system? I'm not complaining, I'm glad that they don't. I guess the bears do allow us to have one nice thing, and that is water at this place. Thanks for hanging out with me today while I change the water inlet. The end.